Hey guys, so this tutorial follows on from the last one. We um, made an emissive material that wasn't actually quite right. I think I messed it up with how I handled the colors. And so this one pretty much follows on. I'll go back, show you how to make an emissive material, show you how to light objects statically, and then I'll go move on to something like this that actually dynamically lights the scene. Okay, so first off, you'll need a material. So you get any materials. These are just the like the standard ones that come with the engine. I've made a light one, so you get a vector and um, plug that in to multiply and times it by just a scalar, which is just S click. And to get one of those, you just press I think it's three click. Yeah, that's how you get those two. Um, I've named mine brightness. You can call it light anything you want and um, I've clamped mine between 0 and 20 and uh, had a max of 100 so you don't get any like ridiculous values when when you're working with it it's just quite cool uh, so the next thing you need to do well once you've made that you can just go to the object and click so it'll probably be like this you go light mass settings drop it down use a missive for static lighting and then you click build. Depending on your computer, it will take different amounts of time. Mine takes a little bit longer than normal because I've changed the resolution of the ground and the geometry in the scene. So it's taking a bit longer, but nevertheless it works. And you should have a lit scene. Well, around it anyways, depending on the strength of what you've done. So using this instance here, you could drop it down and put this to two or zero and then build it again and it'll remove the uh, light so the most frustrating thing working with these is unlike the other light that I'm going to show you how to make you can't just keep updating it on and off in runtime so that's that's the worst thing about it we'll put this to 30 it'll look cool um, yeah that that's that is the worst thing about it. All right. Cool. So yeah, 30 is a little bit brighter. You can see a bit more. It's quite cool. Um, the next thing is actually having something that emulates that the material is actually touching the scene and you can move it. The way I've done this is by using a point light and a mesh plus the same material. So I'll show you how to do that. We um, I made a light here. So what you'll need is you'll need a static mesh. You can choose anything you want. Apply the material, use the instance, and you don't need to do that lighting thing anymore because we're doing it dynamically. We grab a point light, attach it so that it's centered around this, so it's at zero. Um, set it to 5000, well, what, that's, the, that's the base value. Change the color to be something similar to this. Doesn't have to be, like, I, I guessed, and it kind of looks the same, so it's fine. In the event graph, it's quite simple. You don't need any of these. You, from your tick, create a timeline. If you don't know how to do that, timeline, it's quite easy. Just have that. Go into it. You make sure you click loop and if you don't know how to add this track you just pretty sure you just click here there and delete it um you add a point don't need to do that anymore but you add three points and create the length of two seconds you add one at zero and have it at zero one at one have it at one one at two have it at zero and you curve them so it's a nice smooth transition and this is going to be a light going on and off and it's just going to be looping on off on off on off um, from your update you're going to want set scalar parameter value on materials if you look that up it's there it's, it even comes up with the like 
the material on the component that you want. So like, yeah. Okay, so the next thing you'll need to do is you need to be changing a parameter. So the parameter that ours is, is brightness. You need to change that and it's clamped to 100 and zero. So you just, I set it at five because I don't want it to go quite off because you get that hard edge black. It doesn't look very good. So I go to be between five and 100 with the alpha coming from the track we made, turn it off and on between those values. And the next thing you want to do is do the same thing to the point light, but it's just set intensity. So you just grab the point light in here and you go, Intent, set intensity, yeah, a bit bad when it comes to typing. And you use the same track with a lerp between 0 and 8000, because 8000 is a bit brighter than the default, and just put that in there. And uh, what you have when that is done is a light that um, turns off and on. But the cool thing about it is if you click the cone, which is actually movable, is it dynamically updates the scene around it as it moves. Yeah, I hope this was helpful and I'll continue to post videos when I can and if you have any questions and put them in the comment section I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.